Hello everyone, thanks for connecting with me. This video shows how to estimate a dynamic panel data regression model using the generalized method of moments. In all aspects of this series, I attempt to use a simple approach to explain the concepts and calculations, so I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it. <laughs> all right, the development of this modeling technique began with the 1982 study by Hansen in which the model was presented as a generalized method for estimating the parameters of an econometric model. It does this by allowing the number of moments conditions, which are the instrumental variables in the model, to exceed the number of parameters, making the estimators more efficient. This approach to panel data modeling is widely used in empirical studies in finance, especially in the areas of asset pricing and valuation where, in addition to controlling for indigeneity, it has also been shown to be robust to heteroscedasticity and serocorrelation. The modeling process combines instrumental variable regression and two-stage least squares, as you're going to find out. In recent years, though, this modeling approach has gained high prominence in the literature thanks to the seminal works of Manuel Arellano and Stephen Bond and their other contributors are summarized here. But before going further, let's review how we got here. In my first set of panel data videos, I began with a description of the different types of panel data, also referred to as longitudinal data. The first two here are balanced panels, the case where the number of observations is the same for all groups in each period. The first is a short panel where the number of groups is, is more than the number of time periods. The flip side of that is a long panel, which is where the number of time periods is more than the number of groups. Balanced panels such as these are generally easier to work with. The third is an unbalanced panel where the number of observations varies across the groups and time periods. To be sure, these examples here are only illustrative of the different types of panel data structures. And as we're going to learn shortly, while Difference GMM is generally okay with balanced panels such as these right here, it struggles with unbalanced panels, especially when there are missing observations. However, System GMM can handle it all. The fourth example is a dynamic panel, the case where the lag dependent variable is included as a regressor. And that's going to be the case in the dynamic panel data GMM specification. The last one right here is a static panel, which specifies only exogenous variables as regressors. So we also learned of the benefits of panel data regression, which includes the fact that it is a combination of time series and cross section, where the focus is on the entire group as opposed to the individual units. And by this design, we are provided with a larger sample size and therefore more degrees of freedom. Incidentally, though, it does incorporate group-specific effects, which must be accounted for. So the next question is, how do we model panel data? Well, it all depends. If the goal is to examine the time series dynamics of the series of the variables, then perhaps we could run panel vector autoregression in order to examine the short run dynamics of the variables, but this is only possible if the variables are integrated of the first order, although not co-integrated. Otherwise, if they are co-integrated, then we run panel vector error correction model in order to examine not only their short run dynamics, but also their long run relationships, as well as the error correction mechanism. And in the case where we have a mix of I0 and I1 variables, which is where some variables are stationary at level and others are stationary only after first differencing, then we could run panel autoregressive distributed lag, which would also allow us to examine not only the short run, but also the long run dynamics and the error correction term. The estimation models to choose from would be dynamic fixed effects, mean group, or pooled mean group by Pesaran, Shin, and Smith, 1999, which recently has gained wide prominence. On the other hand, if you wish to examine the cross-sectional behavior of the series, then perhaps we could run a pooled OLS, but this assumes that there is no unobserved 
group-specific effects, aka heterogeneity. Otherwise, we would have to run either fixed effects or random effects. With fixed effects, you'd have to settle for either least squares dummy variable or within group or first differences estimator. And of course, the choice as to whether to run a fixed effects model or random effects model depends on the verdict of the Hausman test. But with all that in play, there may still be issues left unresolved when using panel data, top of which is indigeneity, which refers to the correlation between regressors and the error term. This problem causes parameter estimates to be biased and inconsistent. And also, the inclusion of the dynamic term of the lag-dependent variable as a regressor elevates the problem of bias and inconsistency because, as you can see, the lag term would be naturally correlated with the corresponding error term in its time period. And this problem is heightened in cases where the time period is short. Additional problems are heteroscedasticity, which is unequal error variance, and zero correlation, which is order regret or autocorrelation rather of the residuals. The GMM estimator serves as a remedy and is useful when we are faced with the problem of indigeneity and also when we have non-spherical disturbance problems of zero correlation and heteroscedasticity in addition to when cases when we're unsure of the distribution of the dependent variable and when the lagged dependent variable is included as a regressor. And why do we do this? To capture persistence or memory, if you like, in the dependent variable. So here I present the two variable linear dynamic panel regression model where the lag dependent variable is included as a regressor, the coefficient of which is the autoregressive AR1 parameter that captures persistence in the model, the value of which is between 0 and 1. X here is the endogenous regressor, omega here is a fixed effects error term, and uh, epsilon is the IID white noise error term. So how do we control indigeneity in the model? Well, again, indigeneity is present when regressors are correlated with the error term, which causes our results to be biased and inconsistent. In the GMM environment, indigeneity is controlled by using what's called moment conditions, which are instrumental variables satisfying these two conditions. One is they must be highly correlated with the corresponding regressor. And two is, they must be orthogonal to the error term, so we can't have errors in variables. In the model, lagged regressors, which are considered suitable, are introduced as internal instruments. And for that matter, the number of instruments cannot exceed the number of groups. And in the main, we find that GMM is actually an instrumental variable model combining instrumental variable estimation and two-stage least squares. And for anyone desiring a quick review of those two concepts, you can pause the video right here and give it a quick read. So to review, what are the benefits of GMM estimation? It controls for endogeneity, heteroscedasticity, zero correlation, unobserved heterogeneity, which is the unobserved group effects, measurement errors, and omitted variable bias. And GMM comes in quite handy when the lag dependent variable has to be included as a regressor, which is necessary when the series exhibits high persistence. When that's the case, the use of fixed effects or random effects estimator would not help because we're still going to be left with biased and inconsistent results. In all, GMM estimators are found to be asymptotically consistent. So what are the GMM specifications? One, it requires a short panel, which is the case where the number of groups is greater than the number of time periods, as illustrated right here. We have four groups and two time periods. And so we say n is large, t is small. Two, it chooses instrumental variables called moment conditions. Three, the instrument used must be highly correlated with the underlying regressor. 
4. The instruments must be exogenous. 5. The number of instruments must be at least equal to the number of endogenous regressors. And finally, the number of instruments cannot exceed the number of groups. So with that, we ask the question, how do we determine the instruments? To be sure, there are two types, internal and external. Internal instruments are generated from the data set and are essentially the lagged regressors. So for example, the second lag of the dependent variable serves as instrument for the first lag, which is included in the model as a regressor, while the first lag of the explanatory variable serves as instrument for the contemporaneous term right here. External instruments are a bit tricky and must be guided by some theory or, or logic. For example, if you wish to examine the effect of capital expenditure on firm value. Now, finance theory tells us that cost of capital is very important in how firms make decisions concerning how much they spend on capital expenditure. So as you would imagine, as cost of capital rises, other factors held constant. Firms are going to be less likely to spend money on capital expansion. So cost of capital may well be viewed as an instrument for capital expenditure. But as you can see, the choice of an instrument is a bit subjective in as much as it should be backed by some good logic and theory. And so caution is called for. And perhaps this is why many studies settle for internal instruments, which are the lagged regressors, found to be suitable. So going forward, I'm going to explain the persistence effect in the dynamic model, which is the implication of the coefficient of the lagged dependent variable to understand its empirical significance. Next, I shall explain interpret estimation results and diagnostics, and finally, use e-views to estimate difference GMM and system GMM. Thank you.